It was only a matter of time before Amazon launched a smartphone. After all, the company has been extending its reach from the online realm for a number of years now, and after the addition of the Fire TV recently, the smartphone was the last major device genre it hadn't explored. Now, Amazon's just recently filled that void with the Fire Phone, an AT&T exclusive smartphone that ships in late July for just under $200. It's very unique, no other devices have six cameras and quick access to tech support, plus features like Firefly and dynamic perspective that give the device a flavor of its own. Now in a crowded smartphone industry, uniqueness is crucial and Amazon will really have no problem here. Now, accepting the five cameras on the front, the Fire Phone looks like an average device. In many ways, the build reminds me of the Nexus 4. For instance, Gorilla Glass adorns the front and rear, and the plastic sides reach slightly around the back. The 4.7 inch display is actually really comfortable to hold, and Amazon's been adamant that the size is optimal for a one-handed use. It's 8.9mm thick, so it really isn't too bulky, and the back is also narrower than the front. Now let me go ahead and talk about those five cameras. Being accustomed to a single front-facing lens on the vast majority of smartphones, a lens for each corner does give the phone a weird look. If you feel like the NSA is watching you, the fact that five eyes are looking at you whereas before you'd only have one, it probably won't ease your worries. Now they are there for a reason. Amazon's unique offering is its 3D-like dynamic perspective feature, which basically makes the cameras take on a Kinect-like role by looking at where your face is positioned and how far it is from the phone. For instance, if you're looking at the lock screen and you move your head side to side, it'll appear like the background of the lock screen, like if you're looking at balloons, it'll appear that they're moving side to side with you. It's actually really, really cool. Now this will also become in handy for games. For instance, if there's one game that Amazon was demoing where you're a snowboarder and you use your head to actually move the snowboarder around. You can also lift up your head to make the snowboarder jump. Now, users with motion sickness will not like this option, and it sort of reminds me of the parallax motion on iOS 7, a feature that frustrated a fair number of iPhone and iPad users. Now, you can turn this feature off, but Amazon does believe it's an essential part of the whole experience. Now, another standout feature on the Fire Phone is Firefly, which isn't unlike most other QR code readers, but it can read several types of information. For instance, Firefly does a great job of overcoming glare, and it can scan CDs, it can scan TV shows, music, barcodes, it can scan a whole number of different items, and it's basically, it's, it's really actually pretty cool. Now, Amazon's also trying to be different in its use of gestures to navigate through its three-panel design. Flick the phone to the right to pull up a list of Amazon services and features, flick it to the left to get something reminiscent of a notifications panel, and then also, if you do slight tilts in either direction, that triggers what Amazon calls peak, which lets you take a quick look at the date, time, battery life, and signal. The software is Fire OS 3.5, which is a version of Android 4.2 Jelly Bean, but there is very little relation between the two because, you know, it's Amazon's made so many adjustments of its own, there is plenty of new features and a new user interface on top. Google Play services will not be offered on the Fire Phone, although there will be a way to sideload APKs. A press of the home button will let you switch back and forth between the app grid and the carousel. The carousel gives you the ability to look at frequently opened apps, and each app can list off some recent notifications. For instance, USA Today shows breaking news stories, the email app shows recent emails, and the calendar app offers up your most recent appointments. Now, oddly, the Fire Phone does not have Bluetooth LE, although Amazon confirms that the hardware does support it. That probably means that the phone will get updated with this spec eventually, but Amazon hasn't given any details about it yet. For a flagship product launching in 2014, this is a bit of a surprise. Now, spec-wise, it isn't the most impressive phone, despite commanding an $199 price tag on contract or $650 off contract, but it's not horrible either. It's definitely what you'd expect from an average phone. Amazon's focus is what makes it unique. The gestures, imaging prowess, dynamic perspective, and Amazon features, and, you know, that's basically why you're going to buy a phone. Its exclusivity with AT&T limits the number of people who actually buy this device, unfortunately, and Amazon isn't interested in selling it as Wi-Fi only. Let me know what you think of the Amazon Fire Phone though in the comments below. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you're excited for this phone. And I will see you next time. Bye!